Hello, it's Sarah. And being that it's the end of the year, I have some polymer clay things I just want to share with you guys um, that I did at Polymer Clay Adventure. Two classes specifically um, that have kind of snowballed into lots of projects that I've done. Um, so I'm going to share what I made. First I'll sh share the projects that the teachers taught and then how I use those techniques to make my own um, designs. But also um, I won't be doing any tutorials or anything for these. If you want to learn uh, how to do it, you can just take their classes. Um, I know Chris Capono has a lot of classes on claylessons.com. So there are uh, places where you can get the tutorials. But, all right, so the first one I want to show is this is a, a mirror tile, and Chris taught it on, she actually did it on a piece of glass, a glass tile. But um, I got this at, uh, I want to just check my battery. Okay, yeah, I should be fine. I got this, you can get these at AC Moore, Michaels. Um, I actually have this big one I want to do. These I got at Hobby Lobby and it was like a two set for like $4. So um, I've also been working on these, um, these Christmas ornaments and I got these at, these were from AC Moore and they're just glass ornaments. And I've ha I had a lot, but I did get more. Um, and they're a dollar. So, um, anyway, so this is Chris's class was, uh, let's see, I'm pretty sure it was called a sun catcher. And uh, I've loved Chris Capono forever, ever since I saw her, um, or when I started first started doing polymer clay and like Googled it and would see her work. You can really tell her work. It's called a sun catcher tile. Um, her website or her blog or whatever is called Mandarin Moon, and I'll put the links in the description box. Um, and I mean, this is mine. It turned out pretty good. I used, I tried to use the colors that she used, and there isn't a huge distinction because there's like a strip of like a browner clay, and then this is supposed to go from brown to green. And I mean, you can kind of see that this is greener up here, but it's not a huge difference. Um, but I love the gems. So see, you put these gems on there, and then the light reflects from the mirror. So um, I used those techniques based on the class I took to create these ornaments. So I have a tree shape. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. <clears throat> I have lots of shapes of these. So I did a heart in pinks and reds. Um, I did a circle and blues and some pinks um, and using the same techniques this is the glass though these are glass so you can actually see through these like this one I love this one this is on an oval um, but the, I just love the gems on this one I'll hold it up closer try not to make it but like the gems because you can see through them you actually see like some of the bubbling or whatever like the colors and stuff through there and I mean I think they would look just as pretty on a mirror because um, the, the light like I said it reflects down in there so I have this hanging on my uh, on a hook by the window and it's really cool and I also used some of the techniques I learned in another class that I took with Linda Hess to do the background the clay the way it's like swirled like that I just had that piece left over from another project that I was working on and just put it on here. But I love that. It kind of looks like agate or something, like a faux rock or something. Um, and then you and the other thing I really loved about this class, um, and I've seen uh, <coughs> um, Lynn's craft, Lynn. Lynn does it all the time, but she uses patina, which it's basically just acrylic paint that you put on the piece and then you wipe it away and the paint kind of sticks in all the nooks and crannies and it brings out the details of all the texture that you've added to the clay. And I was always too chicken to try it, but all of these are patinaed. And actually, um, I started to use like 
dark blue on some of them like instead of black I think I used like a black cherry on this one so I didn't use black um, and then you can um, kind of give it a pop of like put some rub and buff on there so really cool techniques I learned a lot from her I love Chris and I actually have two other classes that I want to share um, by Chris too um, and this one this is a piece I did based on where's the other one here it is <laughs> this one this is a uh, kind of a mixture again of the Chris <clears throat> Capono techniques and the Linda Hess class I took because Linda's class was this under the sea votive so it got me thinking about under the sea stuff and I have a lot of jewelry charms and um, little seashells and things that I could <clears throat> that you can embed in the clay <clears throat> and this is actually a mirror and then it's kind of like a compact and I saw these on YouTube like a year or so ago Maya and I made them and you can make these just very basic just um, make an impression in the clay and rub some rub and buff on there and you know and bake it and you have a little compact but I just did this one using like I said both some techniques from Chris's class and some, te some techniques from um, Linda Hess's class and kind of made this underwater sea theme looking um, piece. And again, I used the swirly clay under there, which I loved. Um, but that's basically it. And I'm learning about too, like when you glue, I didn't glue this down and it's staying on pretty good. But then when I did this one, it came off so I like I glued it back on and I put some like um, micro beads in the hole but I think it just like you can tell it's bigger than that one something happened to it when I was working on it um, and it got stretched out like it stretched away and I should have definitely checked it before I baked it but I love these little gems I just embedded these gems in there these are um, crystals from like a a crystal chain and I just cut them apart um, so okay so those are all <clears throat> all right those are based on the class I took with Chris but then I also did this this is actually the class that I took this is a class that I took on um, it's called clay lessons I'm pretty sure um, and Chris has several I've, I got one, two, I bought three classes on claylessons.com and I'll put that in the um, description box as well. And this is again on one of those glass uh, tie, it's a, um, sorry, a ch um, ornament. <clears throat> and this is a totally different class uh, and it has a jewelry piece and a, a real seashell um, and still a couple of gems and it's an underwater themed ornament. And I think I put too much patina on here. Like I think in the future I would probably either use a lighter color or and I just go crazy with the rub and buff and everything. So it looks a little muddy or dirty to me, um, but I still like it. It's pretty, you know, pretty cool. Um, I love the like the way the sand and the coral looks. Um, and then I did a bigger tile, <clears throat> which this is again one of those mirrors. That you can get at Michael's. These are like two dollars. They're great. I would say, you know, try them. They're um, two dollars, and they bake like really easy. And there's mirror behind here, so I again cut the clay out and put the little gem in there, and then the light can reflect back out to you. So this is just another version, like a version of the class. That's um. It's in PDF form and it's on uh, claylessons.com. So I just did wanted to do a bigger one <clears throat> while I had all the um, blues out and all that stuff. I have a little uh, seashell charm here. This is a real seashell and I glued a little pearl in there. And then these charms I got at Michael's. And then the rest is clay basically and just the gems. So that's that. <clears throat> And then, so yeah, so based on that, pretty much that's where this came from, this little guy. These were just um, in that, still in that underwater theme. I just kind of threw in some seaweed 
and uh, still used Chris's um, techniques, but I love that little seahorse. All right, so that's that. Then, all right, so this is the underwater. This is the votive that um, Linda Hess taught at Polymer Clay Adventure. Actually, I think it was this size. I'm pretty sure it was this size that she taught the class with. This is a, uh, I think a four inch, four or four and a half, four and a half inch votive. Um, and they sell these right in like Michael's in their um, candle department. <coughs> <coughs> and you basically cover the, the glass votive with clay <clears throat> and you can put a little, I have a, like a tea light. I don't know where it went now. My voice is, <coughs> excuse me, I have a little tea light here. But you just put it in there and then the light shines through all your holes that you cut. And it's really, really cool. I love, this was so fun. Um, I had done a couple, like a couple years ago because it's done with um, this mold. And I think it's like a Sculpey mold. <clears throat> I wish they had the names on here. Anyway, it's like under the sea creature. So I had that mold and I made this box. And it's a video back a couple, maybe like a year or so ago. And I was playing with all the mica powders at the time. And um, so I had done this. So I had done some seaweed. And I like the bubbles. Like I added these like dimensional bubbles which I think are amazing and the, um, put a little bling in there and the and like the rocks and the pebbles and stuff and but it's just on a paper mache box because this you can bake this you can bake paper mache so I, I have some plans I was thinking of doing more paper mache type stuff but I did this big one which I love because Linda teaches you how to do this like striations in the in the clay um, to get it to look like the ocean, like the swirling ocean. And I didn't get it, I didn't do it very well on this one. Like it just got all, it just blended all together. By the time I was done, like getting it flat and everything to put on here, there's just like a tiny bit like of purplish blue and stuff, like very little. So of course I had to do it again and, um, I was better I did much better and that's like I said I had some clay left so that's why I put that on here <clears throat> you can see some on here because I had mixed it so like I used it on here so I had a, a couple and again like when I did this one I did a mirror because I figured well why not right but again it's the same blue it doesn't have like there's a little bit of like light blue here but very little change in the color and I love that that was one of my favorite things that she did in the class so you can do it on a mirror um, the same technique so I did it on this one and you know what I didn't do this because the this is actually we she taught taught us how to make the jellyfish and the coral but I think everything's kind of big to put on one of these I mean you could kind of do it with just a fish maybe, you know? Um, but, uh, and then today, I, I was busy today. Um, and like I said, I'm not gonna show you how I do this. If you guys are interested, I'm gonna give you the websites and stuff like that. But this is one of those, uh, <clears throat> what are these called? I'm not sure what these are called, but it's like a, a light block, I guess. It's just a block and this one's, uh, five and a half inch pretty sure yeah and so they have these at Michaels and these in my Michaels they're down the same aisle with um, the buttons and um, the soap supplies that's where I found them. and the mirrors the mirrors are there too they're right near the mirrors and my hubby's gonna hook it up with <clears throat> a little light in there and I think at AC Moore they sell the um, Oh, thank you, Joe. They sell the lighting thing with a little um, on-off switch, too. So he brought me some tea. Thank you, honey. Um, so, yeah, but I love this. And I actually, I'm going to turn off the light real quick and just see if my octopus glows in the dark. Let's watch. Ready? 
Look, I mean, you can still see, but like my octopus is glowing. I have to turn this light off. Look, he glows in the dark. I should have used more of this glow in the dark clay for like little dots and everything on there. I just think it's amazing. Like it, it glows in the dark. Like I still have another light on in here. But anyway, it was cool because um, <clears throat> I think she used translucent and I didn't have, I think I do have translucent, but I just grabbed the, um, the glow in the dark clay and I thought that was cool because I have them, but I've ne never used them. And it just made me start thinking about so many things like you could do one of these, right? I think I'm going to get an early Christmas present to me um, when we get paid on Tuesday. I'm going to cut like stars in all, like all different color stars in the clay and then put all the celestial stuff on here, maybe with some glow in the dark clay, some things and... Um, make a little solar system one wouldn't that be cute uh i mean what else could you put up in the sky i mean you, it's your sky you can put whatever you want so yeah so those were i mean this is what i've been basically doing i've been kind of hooked on these things uh but yeah this was the one i i did today and see i i barely got any change in the clay but i got this little swirl and there's a little one down here, but you cover it up pretty much. So there's one down here and one up here. Um, <clears throat> but you cover it up when you put all this stuff on there. So I got that. And then the last class, I'm going to take a sip of my tea if you guys don't mind. Maybe that's why my throat is... Um, mm. This I made today. <coughs> This is another Chris Capono class. And I know Lynn. Lynn's, I'm gonna, I'll see if I can find her video too. Um, because Lynn does this and she does it different. She like paints the, um, the little, uh, these things. It's all you do is use, where the heck? Sorry, I'm, I have stuff all over. Uh, one of those gems that I used for uh, one of these guys. It's bigger though. And she like paints it and she's done lots of dragon's eyes and she paints them like all different colors like she'll do a red eye with like a black poop pupil so i think that's pretty smart too that's not how chris does hers but i'm not telling you how chris does hers because you can get it um on uh claylessons.com and it's the woodland dragon eye and I just decided to put it on a little tin box. So, and you can bake this. This goes right in the oven. I did the bottom half first, and I think I used a different color clay. I mean, it doesn't look bad. It looks fine. Um, and I would do this again because obviously the first time you do it, you kind of learn and figure out what you could do differently. And I've seen lots of different pictures of these with all different color leaves and different colors of clay. This is all done with one color of clay. And then you patina, and I used the black clay to patina it. And then I used some Inca gold. I used like a turquoise Inca gold on the leaf petals a little bit just to make them stand out. And like, or she used jade, which I didn't have jade, but I used like a green on the eye and then I just put gold all around the edges and stuff. I covered it with gold because I just love it. But you can like see rub and buff, you can do exactly that. Like you put it on and you can buff it up. I'm supposed to make it nice and shiny. So yes, yeah, so fun. I am so happy I did this because I bought the class a while back, like <sighs> probably last month last month and it's and I have one more class that I got and it's for inchies by Chris Capono she does these little inchies and I'm going to do them too because I want to add them to a mosaic um, but yeah so I'm going to leave this out for Matt to see my son wanted to see it and it's pretty easy I mean I I don't think I've ever covered a, a tin and this isn't um what is the, what are those mints called? You guys know what I mean. Um, I can't think of the name, but um, this is just a plain metal tin that I ordered online 
way back. I have several of them, so I just figured I would use them because I had them, and it worked out just fine. Uh, the only thing is when you add the, and this is from one of those texture sheets, <clears throat> texture the clay first and then put it on your box because when I textured it on the box, then I went to pull it off, it ripped the clay. So I had to patch it up and stuff. But this was my first one, so I wasn't like really, I didn't care. It was kind of, you know, going to see what happened. Um, but I love it. So, because I know I've seen like um, Mandarin Ducky. Uh, she's a polymer clay artist. Mm. I think she's done journal covers and stuff. People do dragons a lot with polymer clay, and I can see why. Like, this is a texture um, sheet, but I actually used the little etch and pearl tool. It's just a round circle. I started to do it with, <coughs> like, make the scales with, like, a, a pin or something. I would, And it was just too time-consuming, so, you know, I have no patience. So I just started using, and I think that makes just as cool of a, you know, it's not perfect and I think I would be a little more also she left it plain in some places so you don't have you know and I just once I got going I kept going so but I love it I think it turned out super cool and it closes and you got to make sure don't put the clay all the way up because then it won't close <clears throat> but yeah I won't be doing a tutorial guys no tutorials for any of this stuff um, I actually enjoyed um, polymer clay adventure this year I enjoyed several of the classes and I'll talk a little bit about it um, I did have an issue with uh, Kira actually wrote me an email and asked me to take some videos down and I did because like I said I mean I I don't want to get in trouble I love being able to share um, with you guys so I did that and then it kind of did it just stifled me for a minute. I kind of felt, um, because I love to share what I learn, and that was, that was what got me about it. Um, but it's not okay to, to just turn around and teach, basically teach you guys what I learned in a class for free. So I have to put my own spin on it. And so I think when I do come back with more tutorials, it will be my own way. It'll be my own piece, my own creation. I'm not going to be able to share this because this was a class that Linda taught. And I'm not going to be able to teach you this because that's what, you know what I mean? So fair enough. Um, and I'm good now. I think I'm going to be able to start the year off with positivity as always and um, but yeah I did I took down all the videos but I still wanted to share this stuff and I mean I'm I'm still kind of at it I have I've been wanting to do an art journal page but look I have all this scrap clay on my desk and some of my milk glass and I still have this piece that I'm that I use for seaweed so you know I'm like I, I you know here's my blues I keep <clears throat> trying to use them up um i i want to oh i'll show you one more thing before i go maya and i were working on uh, teacher's gifts her teacher loves disney and i had gotten some of these disney buttons and so i think there might be a pink one in my future i love these these little mini mouse look at that that's another mickey but I have the little kitty cat. And then this is just off of her, one of her coloring books or something. It says Disney Princess. But I thought that would be neat for a tile, right? Um, and then it comes with these bows, so it's very girly. But I didn't make a bow tile. I have this little Mickey in case I wanted to. See, this box is kind of made with red and black because I think I'm going to do the music ones. But this is kind of like a red and black, red, black, and white. But that Mickey goes with it. But anyway, so this is hers. This is for her teacher. Um, I think it turned out super cute. So it's red and green and for Christmas. And we put the ribbon around it to just make it look more like a package. And a little bit of stickles around the feet. 
I think I could varnish a little bit more on that foot. She missed the spot. Um, but yeah, and then, so when you're putting the ribbon on, make sure you have enough room between or else it would be, you know, see it's, anyway. But yeah, super cute, right? So this was different buttons that we had and this came with um, Goofy and Donald Duck and a bunch of them in all Christmassy and it came with Joy. Um, and then I just used other tiles. She wanted the Christmas tree. The point said I just think it made it look Christmassy and a couple painted ones that I did. So I think her teacher will like that. Alright, so what else? So that's about it. Um, but yeah, so that's what I mean. I've been busy, like I've been making things. I just haven't, I can't film it while I'm doing it. Um, so I've just been trying to get a lot of this done. Uh, and then... Because Polymer Clay Adventure is ending. I mean, 2016 is starting, but I haven't signed up for 2016. I'm thinking about Wanderlust. Wanderlust, or Wanderlust, it's called. And it's a mixed media um, event that's all year long, again. But, like, Finnabar's teaching. Um, what's her name? Oh, man, the one I did... Uh, I already took a class with her. Oh my gosh, my brain is dead. But anyway, it looks like there's a lot of artists on there that, um, cause see, I would go take these classes with, with them, but they're far away. So, you know, you can't beat it when they're just on the internet and they're right there. So anyway, um, that's what I'm thinking of doing. So, all right, you guys, I just wanted to share those pieces. It was fun. I enjoyed it. I think Polymer Clay Adventure is worth it for those of you who are wondering. Um, for the price, you get a lot of information. Um, you get some of the stuff I wasn't going to do or it was too advanced for me. I mean, maybe there was some beginner stuff that might be too beginner for you. But you learn a lot from everyone. You might learn... Uh, why they do something a certain way that you never thought of before. You know what I mean? And then it's like, oh, okay. You know, so it's that type of stuff that kind of, um, that I enjoyed. Also, like some of the interviews, which you don't really, you know, need to know that much about someone to, to take a class, but it is interesting to, to find out where they got, um, where they learned about polymer clay, where they take their inspiration from. Um, so it's very, it's worth it. I would say it's worth it. Um, and you'll find out about a lot of different forms of polymer clay, like Suzanne, or what was her, Ivester. I think her name was Suzanne Ivester. OMG, I would have never known, like she paints with polymer clay. Um, I really like this one, Lisa Renner. I liked her class a lot. Uh, so, and I didn't even make, I didn't make Lori Micah's piece yet. I didn't make, like I haven't made all of them. So, I don't know. I think it's worth it. That's my little two cents. And, all right, you guys. Happy holidays if I don't see you before then. We're getting close. We're in the home stretch. <laughs> all right. Thanks for watching.